Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Grand Blank United Methodist Church video worship series. My name is Gary Brandt. Here she comes. Good morning, there everyone. She is. I'm Jackie Davidson. There's Jackie so nice, Davidson. Yeah, so nice to be with all of you this morning. Jackie's the technician again this morning. I am. Yeah, you did a great job last week, by well, the thank way. You, there Gary. were a lot of comments ah. about uh, your work. So, oh, uh, you know, we thought we'd have you. Yeah, I know it. Well, first thing to say this morning is, Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, everyone in our congregation and all the friends and the family who are visiting us here this morning. And it's uh, we just wish you a happy, blessed day and this day you of bet. hope for all of us. You bet. Very odd, again, being here in a home doing this and not being with you, but uh, we certainly miss everybody. And I don't know, particularly today, I don't know, it's just yes. we miss everybody. But here we are. The uh, reading this morning is a short one, and actually, it's the chorus of the song that we're going to sing. And Jackie's going to read it. Go ahead, Jackie. Okay. Yeah. Amazing grace, how sweet the song. When I take my last breath, life over death, living for the rest of my life. There it is. Life over death, living for the rest of my life. That's what today is all about. Mm -hmm. The song is entitled, They Say That Jesus Rose from the Dead. And it was written specifically for Easter and specifically for the Grand Blank United Methodist Church. It was written some time ago. I wrote it. And anyway, this morning, we hope that you find it meaningful on this Easter morning of worship at home for you. Are you ready, Jack? Yeah, I am. This is kind of fun, eh? I think yeah, so. Yeah, this is fun. Yes, I mean, I you know, it's kind I'm of loving fun. it. Yeah, okay. Two, three, and... <laughs> They say that Jesus rose from the dead long ago. They say that Jesus rose from the dead long ago. At the dawn of the coming day, the stone was rolled away. They say that Jesus rose from the dead long ago. When I said, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Right. 
Right. We ended together. We ended together. It's always good when you end together, I'll tell you. Good morning, church. Happy Easter. It's good to be with you all in spirit. I trust that this morning you know God's peace and presence in your life in the middle of all that's happening around us. I want to invite us now to take a few moments of silent prayer and offer up to God our joys and concerns. God of resurrection and new beginnings. We wake up this morning to remember and celebrate resurrection in a way that we never have before. We find ourselves this morning like Jesus' disciples scattered in our own homes, concerned with uncertain times and unknown outcomes. We wake and like every Easter Sunday, we know today that there is healing, restoration, love, everlasting life as well as new beginnings and yet there is also chaos and uncertainty death continues to loom large as the coronavirus pandemic continues we pause to think about those afflicted with this virus our hearts are with them as they battle for their health and their lives lord we thank you for the medical staff the doctors nurses aides, janitors, and chaplains who are in harm's way caring for your beloved. We know that this day you are here. You have not abandoned us. You have not left or withdrawn your spirit. You are with us. You are present to those who need you most. Give the doctors wisdom. Give the nurses compassion. Give us your knowledge as we continue to come to grips with this pandemic as a state and as a nation. Help especially those in our large cities, New York, Detroit, Chicago, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and so many others. This pandemic not only raises health concerns, but anxieties about work, school, finances, and resources. Lord, we come to you this morning with open hands, hurting hearts and preoccupied minds, seeking your provision and your abundance. The resurrection reminds us this morning that there is nothing too big for you to overcome. Please, Lord, calm our hearts, quiet our minds, and show us again what new life looks like. Remind us this day of your salvation in all the areas of our lives, as individual families and as the church. Finally, God, may the season of quarantine and Lent that have joined together bring about a new beginning for us as people. Please continue to shape our hearts toward your will and desire for our United Methodist Church, your heart and longing for our country, and your plan and purpose for our lives. Like Jesus Christ's own journey through death into the tomb, and return to the resurrected life. May we too emerge from this time of transformation to be more Christ-like. May we embody the love, hope, and grace that you offer us. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now for our Jesus and Me message by Jessica Smith. Hi, Jam Kids. Happy Easter. Hey, look what I've got, my own Easter basket. Normally there's candy in these eggs, but I have something different in here. I bet some of you got this delivered to you this week. Let's look what's in our first egg. It's Jesus. This reminds me that Easter is all about Jesus. Let's see what's in our second egg. The second egg has a cross in it. This reminds me that Jesus was nailed to the cross for us. See what's in our third egg. 
In our third egg, our nails. This actually reminds me that Jesus was nailed to the cross. These aren't the type of nails that they used to nail Jesus to the cross with, though. They were much bigger, and I know that Jesus suffered great pain for us. Let's see what's in our fourth egg. There's a stone in here. This stone reminds me that after Jesus died, they placed the body in a tomb and put a huge stone over the entrance. On Sunday morning, two women went to see the tomb and the stone was rolled away and the tomb was not covered by this stone anymore. It reminds us that even a huge stone could not keep Jesus in his grave. Let's look and see what's in our fifth egg. It's empty. This tells me, and what the Bible says, is that when two women went inside the tomb, it was empty. Jesus was not there. At first, the two women thought that someone had stolen the body of Jesus, but inside the tomb was an angel that said, he is not here. He is risen, just as he said he would. Come see the place where he lay. This empty egg reminds us that Jesus' tomb was empty, he is risen, just as he said he would. The Jesus we serve willingly took up his cross, but he could not be held on the cross by nails, and he could not be kept in the tomb by a huge stone. He is risen and lives in heaven with God his Father. The Bible tells us that everyone who believes in him will join him in heaven. I actually have one more egg in here, and I'm going to see what it is. Aw, I think some of you got this too. Look at this sweet little baby. He has a cross on his chest too. This reminds me that Jesus is my shepherd and that he loves me so, so much. The story of Easter gives us hope that we have a Jesus who loves us so much. Here's a little poem. Christ the Lord is risen today. Angels rolled the stone away. From the tomb wherein he lay, Little children, come and sing glory to the King, Christ the Lord of everything. I hope you have a great Easter. I know I tell you every week how much I miss you, and it's true this week too. I can't wait to see all of you again at church soon. Happy Easter! And now Easter greetings from our Jesus and me kids. Happy, Happy Easter! Happy Easter. God, bless. God bless! Happy Easter! Happy Easter, Easter, everyone. I hope you have a good Easter, and bye. Happy Easter, everyone and everybody. Happy Easter. Happy Easter from the church family, <laughs> Carrie, Jody, and Calvin. Happy Easter from Anna and Levi. Happy Easter. Happy Easter from the Woods family. Happy Easter, everybody, from Charlie and Sam. Happy Easter, church. We miss you. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy. And now a word from Scripture, Matthew 28, 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, 
Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Welcome to this uh, time of worship and, and the proclaimed word. And happy Easter to each and every one of you and to your families and to your friends. And while we're not gathered in worship together, we are gathered in spirit. I wanted to call to your attention that uh, Lori has uh, started germinating seeds to grow in the garden. And uh, obviously these are signs of new life, just as Easter is a sign of new life. And so I've asked her to show you what this looks like in terms of planting and germinating seeds for new life and for growth and for new beginnings. Thank you for choosing to be with us. Thank you for choosing to worship with us. And I pray that your day goes well and I pray that you have uh, the opportunity to be in community with friends and family. Well, just be safe and be thankful for this day. Happy Easter to all of you from our home to each of your homes. The title of the message for today is The Power of Easter. And the scripture verse that was read to you is a familiar verse of scripture, which basically tells the story of the beginning of Jesus's ministry and what happened on that first Easter. I want to begin by saying to you, maybe for once, we celebrate Easter differently. Maybe we celebrate the resurrection just as the disciples did, alone and in silence. And so I pray and hope for you today that you'll spend a few moments in silence reflecting on the meaning of the resurrection and the power that it gives each of us to move forward to embrace the promises of God. There have been a number of you to call and email and text to see how we're doing here. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for remembering us as we go through and move through this very difficult time. And thank, thankful for the Lingual family. I hope I pronounced that Lingual. right. Lingual. Lingual family, who brought uh, us... Um, dried palm leaves. Dried palm leaves in the shape of a cross. This too also represents new life for us. The multicolored the bowl. The multicolored bowl. Yeah. It's so important for you to see. Yeah. And to recognize. So I'm hoping today that faith will outweigh fear. As we affirm our faith, as we proclaim to be Christians, it means the proclamation of release over suffering, hope over despair, and life over death. What in the midst of the COVID-19 can that mean with so much suffering and despair and death around us? This is Easter day, folks. This is Easter Sunday. This is the day Christians around the world claim the power of Easter. And this year, more than any other year, we need to claim faith over fear, life over death, and hope over despair. From the perspective of a Christian, Jesus was the only one who paid the ultimate price for our brokenness and human frailties. Why couldn't Isaac, why couldn't Isaac the son of Abraham be sacrificed because he was not the son of God, but Jesus was and still is. Amen. Amen. This is the Sunday. We say goodbye to the past and claim new life for a new future. Even when there is death all around us, Easter calls us to go forward. This is the day we break from our fear of death for Christ conquered death and set each of us free. Let's talk about death for a moment. Here is what your pastor thinks Christianity says about death. There was a teacher named Jesus who taught that God wants us to love each other, even those we have difficulty getting along with. 
He was executed on Friday by crucifixion. And some of the women who followed him said they found his empty tomb on Sunday morning. And later they encountered him outside the tomb alive. His disciples said he appeared to them several times after his death. Even once he appeared and cooked a meal for them. So Jesus invited one of the disciples, who was a skeptic, to put his fingers into the wounds on his side where he was pierced during his execution. Small communities of faith who heard these stories began to gather for supper on Sundays. And they said they experienced Jesus's presence in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup, which we traditionally do on Monday, Thursday. So they came to believe that serving Jesus was more important than being successful by worldly standards. Jesus became the center of their devotion and attention. They believed Jesus wanted them to care for those whom no one else cared about. The poor, the widow, the sick, the imprisoned, to share their love and concern with the oppressed. They took care of sick people when no one else would. They delivered meals on wheels. Well, probably not on wheels, but they, they did deliver meals just like we have done here. They came to believe that the most important thing in life was being, sharing and loving those in need. When they were expected to take a loyalty oath that said, Caesar is Lord, some of them would say, Jesus is Lord. So say it with me now. Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Even if it meant losing their jobs or their freedom, or in some cases, their lives. And when they died, they believed they would be with Jesus. They were Easter people, like the current frontline workers doing their best to revive the sick and the caring and the dying Amen. during this horrendous, yeah. horrendous disease. Amen. I have a friend in California who asked me when we debate or discuss the subject of religion, isn't religion really just a set of teachings designed to give people comfort because of our human anxiety about death? If so, I say it was a strange comfort for the Christian martyrs who died saying, Jesus is Lord. It was a strange comfort for those who lived in a voluntary poverty because they chose to share what they had with others who had nothing at all. It was odd for those who risked their lives visiting people in prisons where their safety was uncertain. Eventually, this little movement grew to become a global revolution with two billion followers and popes and, and councils and rule books and denominations and thousands of buildings. But most of the believers of Christianity came to live lives that were pretty difficult to understand in any meaningful way, as they were quite different from the others who lived around them. But there have always been and still are those who believe that sharing with the poor, caring for the sick and the marginalized is more important than anything else. I ask you this morning, or today, whenever you're seeing this, what do you believe on this Easter Sunday morning or, or day? Where do you experience the power of Easter in your life? Interestingly, in so many instances, it seems that Christians who are poor themselves are more likely to be willing to share mm -hmm. sacrificially mm -hmm. than those Christians who are more fluent. True. They have done this even when it means sacrificing mm -hmm. their own security mm -hmm. and success. Amen. They have felt that life with Jesus is more abundant life than the life the world has to offer. Mm -hmm. They have believed that Jesus is more alive than anybody or anything valued by this world. I think this is about all that Christianity can say objectively about death. 
that Jesus has conquered death and lives as the Holy Spirit through his disciples, and he lives through each of us when we embrace the power of the resurrection. There is a parable in the Gospel of Luke about a rich man who dressed in purple and fine linens and who ate three large meals every day. At the gate outside his home, there lay a beggar named Lazarus, and I'm sure you've heard of him, whose body was full of sores from malnutrition and who longed to satisfy his hunger on the crumbs the servants swept away under the rich man's table. The beggar died and was carried to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man died and went to hell. But in the story, the rich man called out to Father Abraham to send Lazarus over to him to dip his finger in some water and wet his lips because it was very hot in hell. And the rich man was accustomed to poor people waiting on him. But Father Abraham said it couldn't be done. He said to the rich man in hell, remember the chasm that existed between you and Lazarus on earth. The idea of letting Lazarus inside your gate on earth was unimaginable to you. Well, you can't get rid of the chasm now. It still exists and Lazarus can't get to you. I think that is how the parable that Jesus told ended. But I think the early Christians added an addendum to Jesus's parable, and this is what their addendum includes. The rich man says to Father Abraham, well, if Lazarus can't help me, at least send him back to earth to, to warn my brothers so that they do not end up in hell with me. Abraham says to him, what good would that do? They have the teachings of Moses and the prophets already. Lazarus can tell them anything they don't already know or can't tell them. The rich man says, but surely if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. So Abraham says, no, if they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. And the specific biblical reference is Luke 16, 19 to 31. I don't think the early Christians ever expected the story of Jesus' resurrection to convince anybody of this event. I think they expected that the way Jesus' life embodied the deepest truth about what is truly rich and abundant life to open people's hearts to the possibility of Jesus' resurrection, not the other way around. I think that Christianity expects that we, meaning you and Julius Delpino, living the rich life and abundant life of love and justice and peace and service that Jesus taught might open our hearts, really open our hearts to the possibility of our resurrection as well. I believe that's why you are listening to this message today because you do believe in the power of the resurrection. Because honesty, honestly, lots of Christians are agnostics when it comes to life after death. I think life after death is a very difficult thing for human beings to imagine or believe. Maybe an impossible one. I think it is incredible in the literal sense of the word without being credulous Hardly anybody believed in the resurrection of Jesus when they first heard about it. Mary Magdalene did not believe it was the resurrected Christ when she met him in the cemetery. John 20, 14. The disciples thought the, woman, the women were telling an idle story. Luke says, and they did not believe them. Luke 24, verse 11. Thomas would not believe. John, the 20th chapter, the 25th verse. It was the experience of the risen Christ in the midst of them, in the upper room, and on the road to Emmaus, and at the breakfast table, while they were making decisions about how to live the rest of their lives, that opened their hearts to the possibility of the resurrection. Amen. 
The reason why so many of us have so much difficulty with the idea of life after death, sometimes I'm included in that, is not because we are bad people. It is not because we are poor believers or have not prayed enough. It isn't because we have failed in love, not really. It is because we do such a poor job of trusting Jesus with our lives mm. that we can't possibly imagine to trust him with our death. Wow. Never forget that the early Christians trusted Jesus with their lives. They really did. They were poor, but they shared what they had. Mm -hmm. They nursed the sick and disease, even when it put them at risk of catching the same disease. Mm -hmm. As we are so aptly reminded in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. They visited people in life-threatening places. And there are Christians and people of all faiths who are still doing these kinds of ministries today at great personal sacrifice. The Apostle Paul has some interesting thoughts on this subject. He said that resurrection is something we attain. This sounds contrary to his teachings on grace at first, but it really isn't. The Apostle Paul says we attain resurrection by letting go of the things that we use for a sense of false security. Mm -hmm. But that really prevents us from trusting Jesus. Mm -hmm. Listen to Paul. I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord. Mm, amen. And for his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Mm -hmm. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings mm -hmm. by becoming like him mm -hmm. in his death. Mm -hmm. It's somehow we find the power of resurrection. Now that I have already obtained this, he goes on to say, or have already reached the goal, I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Mm. Folks, we are his own. We have nothing to fear. Dying is really just another thing. If we trust Jesus with our life, we can trust Jesus with our death. Amen. For many of us, the question is, will I trust Jesus with my life? Will I trust Jesus with my stubborn partner? Will I trust Jesus with my bank account? Will I trust Jesus with, my, with the love of my life? Will I trust Jesus with my own identity? Will I trust Jesus with my time? And will I trust Jesus with my children and grandchildren? Will I trust Jesus with my anger? And will I trust Jesus with my grief? Come on now, you, you know the story. You're listening to this video because you are looking for something. You're looking for something that will fill your life with more peace and more satisfaction and more faith. My hunch is those who trust in Jesus and his abundance of love and mercy you will discover the power of the resurrection which will set you free. Dying is just one more thing. If we trust Jesus as we claim to trust him, if we trust him with our lives, we can trust him in our death. And I think that is really all we can know. Folks, this is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. I've already decided to embrace the power of the resurrection and to embrace this Easter Sunday morning as a new beginning for me and for this congregation. I will give my life and my death to Christ. Mm. Where in your life are you not trusting Jesus? Mm. What steps do you need to take to get past having a difficult time trusting him? Mm -hmm. 
It may have to do with the unpredictable state of affairs in the world, humans facing their mortality. It may have to do with money. It may have to do with your health. There may be someone you need to forgive, but you can't trust letting go of the anger and the hurt and the disappointment. There may be an addiction you need to finally put to rest. You may be in a troubled relationship and feel you're stuck and can't take the next step because you don't know how to ask for help. Embracing the power of the resurrection will set you free to move forward. Amen. There may be a stand you need to take, but you are afraid about trusting Jesus with the outcome. I know I have my fears. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes I have doubts, and sometimes I think those fears and doubts are going to smother me. But when I turn loose of my need to be in control mm. and my incessant need to be right, mm. I am able to trust in the master. Amen. The lights come on and the path is made clear. Mm. Today know. can be a day of resurrection for you. Mm -hmm. A day of freedom, yes, Lord. a day of hope, mm, yes, Lord. a day of new beginnings, mm -hmm. a day of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Not just another Easter, but a day of resurrection. Amen. You can begin to trust Jesus in your life in a new way beginning today. Mm -hmm. Make a decision to trust him. Yes, Lord. For this is resurrection day. Yes, Jesus. And now, yes. I will close with these words that a colleague and friend once wrote on Easter Sunday. And as I think about this, I'm realizing that this is my last Easter with you. And so I thank God for the privilege and the opportunity to have served you and to have celebrated Easter with you for four years. So this is what my friend says. Let us embrace the love of God, which is greater than any pandemic yes. or betrayal or loss of hope yes. or evil mm -hmm. or lies mm -hmm. or death itself. Amen. Let us celebrate with gratitude all that God has given to us and all that God has done for us. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say bless you and amen. Amen.
Happy Easter, guys. We'd like to close uh, our portion of the video this morning with a, a reading that we hope that you find meaningful on this special day. Yep. Take it away, Jack. Trust in his timing. Rely on his promises. Wait for his answers. Believe in his miracles. Rejoice in his goodness. And relax in his presence. Wow, yes. Thank you, everyone, for viewing this video this morning. And, Jack, you're going to have to go turn it off. Oh, no. So say goodbye to everybody. Bye, everybody. Okay. And once again, everyone, we hope you have a happy and a blessed Easter day. Thank you for watching our Easter service. Please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Comments and thumbs ups are much appreciated. And if you have not checked out our church website, please take a look at the description for the video for links on how you can support our ministry.